The comments that I'd like to leave with you are fairly much parallel to those that we made yesterday when Mark and I visited with you in the sense of, of a sort of one, two, three order. Number one, um, the anxieties in the marketplace are uh, clearly obvious, and I liked, Mar uh, liked uh, um, uh, the comments, of, of course, that Ross made that the instrument panel has a lot of lights flashing. When we talked yesterday morning, I think the market was, uh, had been down 200 and recovered to about 140 or 50 loss and uh, then of course as we all know it was down over 500 so it obviously continued to deteriorate on the other hand just to, it strikes me as interesting that if I understood the public commentary yesterday evening it was that the market was expected to have a still sharper fall off this afternoon this morning as it opened my understanding of the facts is that that's not so the market has uh, rather substantially uh, recovered so I guess again we see the has it, do, what, is, what is the fact situation now? Is it a plus or a minus? It's the last it started up 100, then it started back down. Yeah, it was up 200. Oh, 200. It was up 200? Yeah, no. But then it started back down. You're talking about so, a roller coaster. You're not yeah. talking about yeah. towers. All I can say, uh, as I, and I gave you my disclaimer yesterday, I'm certainly not a stock market guru. I have no opinion. The market has a mind of its own. It's impacted by all of these uncertainties that we recited yesterday in which all of you ladies and gentlemen covered so well in terms of whether you're talking about unbelievable high level that we were at in the market, the, the uneasiness that uh, was, uh, has been traditionally a part of that, the Persian Gulf incident, uh, the higher interest rates, the difficulties with bond. We could go all through that litany. It's a, it's a uh, cascading of events. But I, I would rather simply dwell not on what I would consider good news, uh, as Mr. Pro suggested, and I would I wish I'd had time to, to uh, challenge him a bit. I've, I would take at issue his comment that uh, the, the Chairman Greenspan would necessarily represent the position of the administration. I would see the Chairman of the Fed in his role as an independent and not necessarily uh, just ticking off, quote, good news uh, from the administration, should that be uh, uh, what Mr. Pro had in mind. Rather, I think that it's important that we not panic. I, I guess speaking uh, from the point of view of the uh, ABA, we have long been calling to uh, everyone's attention as best we could and imploring the Congress to deal with the root cause here, which is clearly, and in my mind, is clearly the enormous uh, deficit, the twin deficits, and the uh, apparent inability to cope with those at the moment. And I think the, the, uh, if there's a benefit to come out of adversity, such as the uh, enormous uh, uh, decline in, in net worth and wealth and the d damage that will be done uh, to companies and pension plans, I hope it would be that there is a heightened awareness of the need to get after this uh, problem. And it's maybe like a little stroke. I don't see this as uh, anything fatal. I share Mr. Pro's optimism a longer run, but that certainly uh, there are plenty of lights blinking and plenty of signals going off that uh, there's going to have to be some renewed uh, reinforcement of, uh, of effort to get at this particular uh, root cause problem of, the, uh, uh, of a deficit seemingly out of control. But so our, our, to, to repeat, our ABA position, and I'm speaking here just for that, has long been uh, uh, solidly on the books there and we have implored the lawmakers and have indicated that we as a banking association will, will do anything within our power and control and uh, efforts, you know, to continue the education and the persuasion and uh, trying to get at, you know, getting that thing controlled. This is good news for the bank. The money's got to go somewhere from the market, and a lot of the smaller investors are going to say, gee, I want to put it in my local bank. So is it, in effect, good news for, for banks? I would think that uh, the banks would probably be uh, recipients of uh, a lot of the money that is flying out because I think fundamentally banks do represent a safety soundness uh, institution, a, a safer haven along with the Treasury bills. And uh, it, it, would, it would be very, I think, very much to be expected that you'll see money coming then into money market funds. I couldn't help but uh, reflect, since all of you know that we, as a trade association, stand for legislative thrusts and initiatives, how grateful we are that we have, as a result of the Garden St. Germain bill sometime back, money market accounts, which we didn't have before, and at least those will be, I think, uh, be, I think you'll see increases in those, yes. So this may be optimistic then for bankers. It's good news for you in a way. Well, not good news in the overall sense because a bank will tend to mirror or reflect the economy it serves. And as long as there is uh, uncertainty and damage and any kind of a, if, if we ha do in fact have a, um, uh, a, 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 as I tried to say yesterday, a permanent or a secular trend downwards in this market and it doesn't repair back up, uh, then there is damage in the economy temporarily. I think on the longer term we'll recover if we believe, as we said yesterday, that the uh, corporate profits should be up. Uh, basically there are some, some things going on good. But in the meantime, 
I think that the banks would uh, would not be exempted. They won't be net beneficiaries, put it like that. They'll be a little bit, but not net beneficiaries. How, how do you reflect the chemical and marine Midland have dropped their prime back down? Well, I think that any, as you know, the, the prime is the prime is individually set by by uh, banks who uh, feel, uh, based upon their own cost of funds and own judgment, a need to take certain actions. And it was clear that uh, that the rest of the industry uh, uh, didn't, and it must be that. Uh, that the uh, those banks, uh, forgotten which three or four raised their prime, must have felt that uh, that, uh, that that was just not going to sell in the marketplace. It was just too high. Does the public lower its prime today? I don't know, Brian. I haven't been back. Uh, but my guess is that uh, the same forces that would be affecting chemical and so forth will affect uh, First Republic and Mercantile and so forth, which those banks or any other regionals which did lift their rates. And I would I would just tend to guess those same forces may cause them to. Uh, to uh, drop back also. How important is that to the economy when, when the banks decide to drop back down? I'm sorry? How important is that to the overall economy when banks say, yeah, we're, we're coming back down off that rate? What's the, what kind of signal does that send out? I think if the whole industry had moved and had come back down, I think it would be a different kind of signal. But here you just have a handful of banks, maybe less than a dozen, who simply felt there were some rates. You see it in the airline business all the time. A certain rate structure is published, a certain uh, uh, either up or down. And the industry doesn't follow, and the, and the airline will change its course and its pricing. Uh, the, the prime rate uh, is simply a, a price of money, and uh, if it's if it's out of line with what the uh, market, uh, with with the competition in the market, it'll the market takes care of that, and it, it causes yeah, us to adjust. Trying to send. Aren't they trying to send some sort of a message today, a stabilizing message, or these two banks or three banks, however many they drop? I'm sorry, I just can't answer. I, don't, I haven't seen, I've been in the meeting all morning long, and I just haven't seen the, um, the commentary on uh, uh, what happened, so I'm really not at uh, liberty to discuss that. You said uh, money probably would flow from the market to uh, uh, banks. Uh, would it also flow to the municipal bond market? Yes, I have to try to indicate. I think it'll seek any safe haven, uh, certainly, until it uh, understands better uh, what the equity markets are going to do until it sorts out. So it'll go, it could go to municipal bonds, it could go to treasuries, as it did yesterday. It certainly will go to money market uh, accounts, both with the brokers as well as with the banks. From your, from your perspective now, what do you feel is the outlook for interest rates? I just don't have an opinion as to which way these rates are going to go in the... Um, in the near term. It seems to me that there is probably uh, going to be some uh, continued frustration in the market and as long as there is frustration in the marketplace you could very well get some heightened you know uh, expectations of interest rates and it depends as you well know as we all know depends so much upon the interlocking with the with the uh, course of the dollar and if I understand it correctly the dollar was still under uh, under pressure yesterday and so I would this job owning with West Germany is beneficial or not beneficial to interest rates? Well, it depends on how it, how it works out. If, uh, if the job owning by uh, the secretary uh, to implore uh, Germany to reduce somewhat its inflationary expectations and not have these rates so high, and the, and, uh, the uh, German central bank will bring those rates down, and the Japanese, then that would be helpful and rates should settle back down. <laughs> yes, you, you, I'll ask the same question I did, Mr. Perot. Do you see this? as a major correction or an indication of an oncoming recession? Well, I'm going to go back to my disclaimer that I'm not a, I'm not a uh, stock market guru by any means. I would, I would tend to think, however, that, there, that the fundamentals which we spoke of yesterday are well enough in place to, to preempt this being any kind of a major depression. I see this as more a, of a major uh, adjustment or a correction. Uh, and when you take a look at uh, how far up the market was, I think that people would acknowledge, you know, that uh, you could get some major correction here. We're, what are we, a couple of uh, hundred points under where we started the year or something like that? I mean, that we haven't, we're, uh, given the recovery part that we had today is what I mean. So I don't see, I don't see this as a beginning of a depression, if that's a pure and simple up or down question. I, did not, I do not see that, and I, my response is simply based on the fact that all of the evidence that we see in, in the U.S. economy and the statistics today don't indicate it is that far off track. The economy still has, uh, we have, I said a while ago, we have a very, you know, fundamental root problem to deal with in the twin deficits. But thus far, inflation and productivity and so forth is tracking about where it's expected to be. So I see nothing that would indicate catastrophic type uh, evidence. Can you yes, do that, though, without triggering a recession? 
can you can you deal with those deficits without triggering a recession? Well, that's the sixty-four dollar question. I you know I think there's I think the market is probably indicating to us that uh, you're not going to be able to do that without some type of a recession. As that's our terminology is differing here. I'm just trying to rule out the depression, you know, catastrophic type uh, scenario thing. I just don't see that as to the potential of, uh, of the beginning of a recession or some lack of confidence. Uh, I think that could surely be when you have a day like yesterday. Um, you're probably the one person in the whole world that the financial markets and the public more generally would like to hear from today is the Federal Reserve Chairman. Absolutely. Uh, what do you think is his failure to show up and say something to the public uh, means, or uh, what effect do you think it would have on markets and the, uh, people's confidence? I, I think that we will soon hear, uh, without any question, from, from the Chairman and uh, from others who in authority would, uh, from, the, from the administration and so forth, and I think what they were trying to do was simply not bring to the American public a premature conclusion based upon inadequate or short, short facts. And as soon as they can assemble that information, they would clearly uh, feel the responsibility that, th that the world, in fact, will be putting on their shoulders to speak out. Did you give you a statement today? No, I have no idea about when that statement will come. I'm just trying to answer the question why, why it, it, because it is very obvious that when you have the uh, media of the world, uh, or the United States, certainly focused here on uh, Chairman Greenspan's first major policy address, that he wouldn't have taken lightly uh, stepping aside from that. And, and of course, I think it would do so only because, as I understand it, Secretary Baker is coming back uh, in from uh, Germany, and I'm sure they want to measure very carefully every single word that they have uh, to uh, utter now with regard to policy because of the obvious magnitude of this, uh, of this event of yesterday. How many times are we you last in a recession, major adjustment, whatever you want to call it? The easiest way for me to answer that is that banks, as I said before, banks basically simply tend to mirror or to reflect the basic economies which they serve. So that if we have, and, and we've learned that in Texas uh, over and over again, and if we therefore do have, if that should be the scenario, a, a, a recession, I don't think there'd be any question but that uh, banks, uh, customers as they will, uh, as they're hurt, the banks will, uh, will participate in that, uh, in that difficulty. The only offsetting advantage, if there is one, is to answer the question a while ago, I think that banks are perceived as, as more safe havens uh, in terms of their deposits and their, their, um, their money market funds and so forth than perhaps the, the uh, maybe even the brokers and the investment bankers. So I think money will move to them, but it'll move first and foremost to, to the even safer haven, which will be the treasury market. Did Mr. Greenspan visit with you last night, and if so, give you any indication of how he felt about the, the drop? I'm sorry, none of us uh, connected with ABA had the opportunity to see the chairman. He uh, was in town, but he, uh, he had earlier indicated that he would need that night uh, privately, and I'm sure that as he came into Dallas and all of this was cascading around him, he, uh, I'm sure he was uh, on, in, in, in private and on, on the phones getting everything monitored. Maybe we'd just take one or two last questions, then I'll be out of your way. Do you think the uh, banking industry's reputation as a safe haven will change once it gets securities powers and the public perceives that, you know, they can buy their stocks at the bank and the stocks go down, that must mean the bank is, uh, is you know, having trouble? I think the, uh, the safe haven reputation of the banks is more a function of its regulatory structure and its capital strength and that the, and to add certain securities powers will not be uh, a deterrent in any way to the to the perception otherwise. There'll be plenty of firewalls and safeguards uh, for the banks to be able to handle, you know, the, the uh, securities powers that we ask for. Well, One last question, then we'll, we'll go from there. Are any of your members exposed today because of uh, demand on funds that back any securities? Any big issues that took a hit yesterday? I'm sorry, I hate to, hate to leave the conference on a I don't know note, but I just have not heard uh, from any of the, uh, of the uh, bankers uh, that we've been in the audience with or any that seem to, to report any problems at all, but, but there have only been two or three because of the program events today. I just haven't had a chance to talk to them, so I'll have to take off. Thank you all very much.